Hi, I'm Kat. I'm a huge VA fan. As you can see, I've got the books up here. I've got my VA merch. I'm wearing my Nazar. And I spent the day researching the new Vampire Academy TV show and the writers. So I thought I would share the information I found. So VA family, we're back. Round two, it can only get better from here. When Rochelle started being active on social media again, I like assumed something was up because she just doesn't post. And I thought maybe we were getting a new book. I was holding out hope for Age of X3, but we got the TV show instead. Though until we are sitting there watching it, we can assume that it could fall apart at any moment. Let me know in the comments if you were around for the original movie and for Ovam. You know, back in 2010 when the movie was just first announced, I was stalking the Facebook page, there were the AA vs BB wars, and then the movie came out. And Felicity from Penguin Teen Australia, now at Penguin Teen America, was spearheading the fandom. It was probably one of my favourite times in fandom. We had such hopes, and then they were crushed. That part I didn't like. The movie's okay if you've never read the books. They just had the wrong people working on it. Like Mean Girls is one of my all time favorite movies, but the director of Mean Girls and the writer of Heathers were not the people you should have gotten for that movie. Both middle-aged men too. And it never got a second movie. They really wanted us to raise a million dollars on Kickstarter to get a second movie too. But we're getting a show now, so what do we know? So Prigo was one of the original producers and they ran the official Vampire Academy movie page and Jillian from Prigo is still on board. And there's a few other production companies on board now too. So we have My So Called Company, that is Julie, and then there's Angry Films and then there's Universal Television. Two, it's going to be on Peacock. So for those of us who don't live in North America, we actually have no idea where it's going to end up. It could end up anywhere, like shows that are on Peacock in America are literally spread all around in Australia. Charmed is on Stan, Heroes is on Foxtel Go, and Psych is on Amazon Prime. It could end up anywhere, but I feel like it would fit in most on Stan. It's where Buffy, Charmed, The OC, and The Vampire Diaries lives in Australia. And I have more trust in Peacock and wherever the parent company is because they teased it as a story of romance, friendship, death, sex, and scandal. So it sounds like they're not going to make a mockery out of it and make it a comedy horror like the movie was. Three, it'll be 10 episodes. It's actually quite a lot when you think about it because this first book, it's not that long and not overly a lot happens. So will the first season just be the first book or will it bleed into the second book? And if it does, Adrian. Four, the showrunners are Julie Pleck and Marguerite McIntyre. We know them both from The Vampire Diaries, and I actually have hope with them. Julie is a Vampire Academy fan. She has been talking about wanting to adapt Vampire Academy for years. When she was talking about it when I was in my late teens, I was a little worried because by then The Vampire Diaries had like done whatever it was doing after season four. Like things just got a little crazy in that show. Like I adore the first four seasons, not so much the rest, though Delana should be here, so I did end up happy. But now that I have more perspective, I think Julie is a good choice. She cares about the series, she's a fan, and she knows how to make content for this core target group. Like I may not have liked everything that the Vampire Diaries did, but I did watch it all, so I was captivated. And then she's got the other shows like The Originals and Legacies, I think she did Secret Circle, and then some other things like the this is what she's good at. And then we have Marguerite, everyone's favorite Vampire Diaries mother, Justice for Liz Forbes. She's acted in a bunch of other things as well, and she was a producer and writer on both the originals and legacies. I haven't finished the originals, but I liked what I watched and I will finish it one day. I have no plans to watch legacies, but I have seen that the people who like it really do like it. And then I like that our leading team is two women because the story of Vampire Academy is about two women. Five, the writer's room. We had all of the writers announced. Though I guess we could get more. I am not an expert on like writer's rooms or how TV shows are made in any way. This is literally just what I found on the internet on like their Twitters and their IMDb pages. So we have more women and there's some diversity, so strong start. And everyone just please be nice to them, like be nice to Julie as well. Like please, like if everyone's acting like little shits, we're not gonna get a season two. We might not even get past a pilot. So just be nice to them, they're doing their job. I saw some people complaining that Rochelle wasn't on the writing team. I wouldn't have expected her to be on the writing team anyway. She's a book writer, not a TV show writer. And honestly, she hasn't been releasing much lately anyway, so... 
wasn't expecting her to be a part of the team. Hopefully they do consult Rochelle a lot, but like she's not probably she's probably not gonna be heavily involved. She wasn't heavily involved in the movie either. Okay, let's run through our writers. We have Y Shireen Razak. I am so sorry if I like butcher everyone's names as well. So their Twitter bio also says co-EP for Vampire Academy, which means she's one of our executive producers. They were also a writer and producer on Shadowhunters, the TV show. We all know I have mixed feelings on that show. It wasn't a faithful adaption and it got real weird at times, but I did watch every episode as it dropped and talked about it with my friends and I've even met some of the cast. So technically I've met Christian Ozera as well. There was one scene in Shadowhunters with Jason Simon at the bar and I watched it and I was like, that, that's it, that, that is my book characters. But I have no idea if they were the one who wrote it because I can't remember which episode it is in for the life of me. But hopefully it was them. They've also written for The Secret Circle, which I liked, and that means she's worked with Julie before. And other things that they've written for are New Amsterdam, Rizzo and Isles, and Haven. I have not seen any of them, so if you have, let me know. Did you like them? Are they good? Next up is, and I'm sorry I am going to butcher this name, Morenaik Balogun. Their Twitter bio says writer and actor, but their IMDb page does not have any acting credits on it. But they were a writer on How to Get Away with Murder. I have only seen season one of that show, but I loved it. I need to watch the rest. They're also a writer and producer on Jupiter's Legacy. I am intrigued by that, so I'll have to go and watch that now. Hopefully it's good. But again, let me know if you've seen that. How to Get Away with Murder was good, so I'm on board. And then we have Adam Starks. There are two Adam Starks that pop up on Google, like at the top ones, and the tweet didn't direct us to a Twitter account, so I'm going to assume it's not the British one with a Twitter account. So as long as I have the correct one, they have written for Good Trouble and On My Block, both shows I haven't seen, but both shows I want to watch. And they've also acted in some things. Next up is Jason Coffey. Multiple Jason Coffeys pop up when you type in their name as well. But the one that was linked in the tweet was live tweeting about Empire, so I think I've got the correct one. They've worked as a writer's assistant on Empire and Desperate Housewife, and a showrunner's assistant on Beauty and the Beast, the, the show. I liked Desperate Housewives and Beauty and the Beast. I've never seen Empire, but it looks good. And they also worked on Beverly Hills 90210, like the reboot so like not the original and not 90210 but like the reboot with the original cast we've got some strong bodies of work working on this show next up is jj Breda. can't really find much on this person they haven't tweeted since 2011 and their imdb page has one credit on it for a tv movie called homeschooled they did also win a writing competition hosted by the russo brothers for a film called all fun and games but nothing has happened with that yet so maybe they're like a newbie writer. Then we have Noah Diaz. Noah seems to look like a young person and looks like they graduated Yale last year. And he's mostly a playwright by the looks of it. But the other TV show that he's written for is Joe Exotic. I'm not gonna judge, I haven't watched Tiger King, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to get those credits going. But on his Instagram, he has a highlight of what I read in 2021. So he's one of us. Also seems like he has a book of the month subscription. Then Linda G, she has written on a show called Kung Fu. I have never heard of it before, let me know if it's good. They are also a journalist. So there seems to be a mix of like movie writers and TV writers and playwrights and journalists on it, this show. I have no idea how a writer's room works, but I'm liking that there's a mix of like different people. Can't find much more on Linda, but they are very active on Twitter and I get good vibes from them. Then lastly, we have Ben O'Hara. He has been a writer, writer's assistant and production assistant on a bunch of things like Beverly Hills 90210 and Jane the Virgin. I love Jane the Virgin. And they have a tweet that says, wear a fucking mask. So I like this guy. So there's a lot of projects I like between all of these writers and, you know, one of them's like part bookstagrammer. I'm always hesitant when a favorite book of mine gets optioned, but I'm oddly optimistic for this one. Like I'm very much okay with this adaption happening. The movie burned me bad, so I have zero expectations. We can only go up from here. And I have seen my fair share of bad adaptions, so you can't, you can't throw anything worse at me. I am sad that I am like much older than Rose Hathaway and crew now, so even if I had the connections to be in this show, I couldn't be a main character. But as an OG Vampire Academy fan, I am here to talk. Younger fans, if you wanna know what back when was like, well, I'm here. 
Like I lived through pre-movie, during movie, after movie, and now this. Other OG fans, let's resurrect the fandom. Let's chat. Felicity from Penguin Teen, our leader from the 2010s, I will follow you back into the heart of this fandom. As the show progresses, I do want to do more videos on it, so let me know if there's anything I should do a video about about the show or the books. And yeah, I am hopeful for this show. So I have no idea where the hell I'm gonna watch it because Peacock does not exist in Australia. So if the non-Peacock distributors could be announced now, that would be great. Please comment down below your thoughts or just leave an emoji to let me know you are here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And there's a good chance if you made it to the end of this video, you are a Vampire Academy and Adaptions fan. So check out my Ruby Circle launch vlog here and one of my Shadow and Bone videos over here.